Hey, good evening, everyone. This is uh, Pixels Get Me Podcast, Episode 5. Uh, we are live on Mixer at the moment at mixer.com slash pixelsgetme. Uh, this is a podcast dedicated to gaming, tech, and uh, new media news. Um, tonight we're going to be talking about robots, uh, future football, Elon Musk buying Fortnite, and a few other things. Um, for me, uh, just to introduce myself, if you haven't heard me before, um, I'm a streamer over on Mixer since last February. Uh, we're right now we're playing Smite in preparation of uh, of the release for the uh, the alpha of Breach, where we can stream it. Um, so while we're waiting for Breach, we're working on a little bit of skills in the MOBA slash action slash RPG type variety of games. So we'll probably be playing some Smite, some Black Desert Online, uh, maybe a bit, little bit of League of Legends. Played a little bit of Overwatch this week, stuff like that, just to kind of get the uh, get the skills down. Um, I have with me on stream uh, a couple guest co-hosts. Um, if you guys could introduce yourself, let's start with E Monster eight hundred eight. What's up, man? Hey, man, it's E Monster eight hundred eight. Uh, I'm also a streamer on Mixer, and I stream all kinds of stuff. Everything under the sun, <clears throat> with the exception of Fortnite and <laughs> other <laughs> battle royale games. <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. So, so no, no Fortnite, no, uh, no Blackout. Um, no. What, what, what have you streamed recently? I know you just got off vacation, but. Uh, I did some Black Desert online this afternoon. We did some Node Wars. Uh, we did Sweet. some Ark this evening. Ark, nice. Yeah, my buddy got his new computer, so we were like, let's try it up. <laughs> cool, cool. All right, and also we have Curbs, uh, the resident king of my chat at Mixer.com. Curbs, what's up, dude? Hi. Oh, my gosh. Every time he introduces himself a little bit differently, people. So, uh, hey, Curbs, what you been playing lately, man? And do Stop. not do not say Maple Story too. <laughs> awesome. Um, so I have Curbs here to speak definitively on some of the Destiny Two news, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see if he can because he hasn't yeah. played it. So. <laughs> I know stuff. <so. laughs> All right. So, uh, so let's talk about what we have on the news plate. Um, the first article is from uh, Circuit Breaker. I'm sorry. It's from Verge. Um, they have a. Uh, they did a, an article on the um, the analog Mega SG. This is a uh, a high quality, you know, 2018 version of a Sega Genesis. So you can play the Sega Genesis uh, games. You can play, I believe, Sega CD. It has a little CD tray for that. Um, it costs 189 bucks, and they also have this really awesome uh, wireless controller that goes with it for 25 dollars. Um, they've also come out with other things like the Super NT, uh, which is a Super Nintendo that has, you know, HDMI and all that stuff, uh, definitely breathes new life into the, the old stuff. I don't know if I'll be getting one, but I do like seeing, uh, people keeping these things alive. And then randomly whenever I am garage sailing and I see, you know, some random, you know, console games, I'm usually pretty happy just to see that someone's, someone still has them. Not that they're selling them. I'm usually kind of angry about that. But the fact that they still have them is pretty cool. Um, how about you guys? What do you guys think about classic Sega stuff? Well, what I think about it is um, if I wanted to play classic anything, I'd just go pull it out of storage. Yeah, <laughs> but my Sega Genesis, like, to play it, the power cable, to, like, to get it to work right, you have to, like, place a dictionary or, like, a very large phone book, and those don't exist anymore, the phone books. Yeah. Dictionaries really don't exist either, but yeah, you have to lean it on the cable, and it gives that nice little compression on the uh, where the metal touches the metal, and then it's like perfect. But if anyone like walks heavy in the house, it like turns it off. See, I, I kept mine in pretty good <laughs> condition, so okay. And I still have all my games and all my um, consoles all the way back to my Coleco and Atari. All right, favorite Sega game, Iman. Um, favorite second game would have to be Knights. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Cool. What do you think, Curbs? Uh, I think it's cool. I'm not putting out the price tag for it, but, yeah. uh, overall, I would say I would just get an emulator over actually buying it, but I do think it's a cool piece of hardware and mm -hmm. give you nostalgia-esque feelings if you wanted to buy it, so... That's another thing, though. Like, yeah. using an emulator, 
I mean... <laughs> yeah, just do that? You could just do that, and... I mean, I have, what, a terabyte drive of space to put emulators on. <laughs> I mean, I think it's worth it overall, but just not for me. I think it'd be a good buy for whoever wants it, but... Cool, cool. Good buy for yeah. that person that... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, has the despair of money and likes a random thing on the uh, TV stand, you know? Yeah. Or doesn't have a computer. For all you pixels get me's out there, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I don't know if I would uh, be able to spend the money on that. It is, it is a steep, <laughs> not it is at a steep price. Bucks, right? no. I mean, you can yeah, get, no. you can go to GameStop and get a uh, like the Sega Classic Collection thing. That's like that off-brand mm-hmm. Sega with like forty games or whatever, for mm-hmm. like I don't know, sixty, seventy bucks, maybe eighty bucks. I don't know. There's a couple different variations of it, but. Um, I know neither one of those have HDMI or anything, but at the same time, like, we were talking before the podcast started about these articles, just kind of going over stuff, and Iman had said, like, it's not going to be any better. You know, it's like 8 bits, 8 bit. so 8-bit over HDMI equals 8-bit. <laughs> yeah, well, like, all it is going to be is, like, a crisp 8-bit, that's it. Um, because, like, honestly, like, think about it, the cartridge not isn't going to change. So yeah. therefore, there's no there's no update. There's nothing that's gonna make it seem better. It, you're gonna like I can put it on a 1080Ti and it's still gonna look like Super Nintendo. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think uh, the other day um, I was watching uh, Brilliant Buffoons, his channel Brilliant Plays or Buffoons Plays. It was Buffoons Plays. Um, he's the drummer on Mixer that I've uh, I've hosted a couple times. Um, he uh, he was playing Mega Man x something you know i don't know all the Mega Mans, but this one you could switch the display from being like a regular display to stretched widescreen which made it look awful to scan lines and you can actually have scan lines like old tvs had you know and like all that and i'm like wow like that's pretty smart you know you could have like you can have it go truly retro and just leave options on it to make it look pixel by pixel or or scan lines and all that stuff, so pretty cool. Yeah. But I think that was on the Switch. I don't know. Maybe it was on the PS4. I don't know. Maybe it was on the PS4. I mean, I can do that with like the main emulator. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the same thing. The emulators have been doing that for a while too. For years. Um, another thing though that kind of bothers me about it is, like, no matter no matter what you do, it's going to be the same game and. You know, people are just going to, like, play it, and then they're going to complain about it. Or they're going to try to do speed runs on it and try to get into yeah. the, the uh, what's that, uh, that book of scores? <laughs> not not the Guinness book, but, you know, the speed, no, it, the speed run book, yeah. What was it called? I don't remember, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it was also corrupt as all, all <laughs> anything. <laughs> He's going to try and do like the games done fast things. Yeah, like, awesome yeah, games done quick and stuff like speedy games done quick. Yeah, yeah. Or summer games done quick. I think is what it's called. But yeah. are we agreeing that it's a kind of cool product? It's just not worth it. Overall? Yeah, I'm agreeing with that. Yeah. Yeah, maybe for, for like half the price, I could see springing on it. You know, but like almost two hundred dollars. Ouch. Yeah. Actually, yeah. it is over two hundred dollars. Yeah, because it's so. taxes. Well, with <laughs> yeah, with gamepad and tax, yeah, yeah, you're right. And shipping, if you buy it online, anyway, yeah. And speaking of shipping, it ships next March. Awesome. Thanks for the segue, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so on the other news, um, PS4. Um, this past week, uh, I think they fixed this by now. But the uh, there was some messages you could send to PS4 users. You don't need, you don't even need to have a, a PlayStation 4 to send these messages because you just sign into a PlayStation network account from your phone and you could send this and spam it. And there was a bunch of uh, consoles that were completely like semi bricked, we'll say, um, where they couldn't even boot up because there was a uh, there was a character in a message that the PlayStation couldn't understand. So it would just air out and die. So how cool is that? Welcome to 2018, where we can send weird messages to consoles and watch them die. Twin Galaxies Record. Is that what it's called? Yeah. 
it's the... <laughs> you're like still researching your classic <laughs> your classic scores but yeah so uh so sony patched the exploit um but if you uh if you have a ps4 and you haven't connected it recently to get the patch you probably should because um I guess it's quite difficult to get the patch on it once the uh, the console has the message that affects you. So, uh, iPhone previously had a, had an issue with this where you could send uh, you could send some Korean character to uh, to iPhones and uh, it would lock out the entire messages app. So, pretty awesome. All right, anyone got anything on this? Um. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't think this is actually the first case of this happening on consoles, but, um... No, I think there was one with Xbox a while ago, too. Yeah, uh, also, I guess if you're new to having a console, but there have constantly been, even if it's not this exploit, things sent through messages, or even further back... You know, just flipping a switch and your console being spam with messages to the point where it crashes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was a things, thing. And, you know, a bunch of different things through that that could be avoided by setting your friend or your messages to friends only. Some of them couldn't, but. Uh, so, I mean, maybe it's just me, but it just seems like common sense, at least since I've owned a console before and I know this, that. You would just set it to private anyway. Yeah, yeah. But it seems kind of self-explanatory. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Let's uh, let's move on to uh, Destiny Two. And thanks again to Game Informer for that article there. Um, so this is from Forbes. Forbes is now a uh, is now a gaming journalism site. What's up with that? I don't know, but that happened. So, uh, so basically, Destiny Two has a, uh, a Halloween event um, that's going on. I think since the sixteenth, and it's probably going on for at least a couple weeks, is what Kerbis is thinking. Um, since most of the events last that long, and that kind of goes in hand in hand with Halloween. Um, but basically, the uh, the deal is is you can do a uh, it's like Diablo Greater Rifts. So you clear as much as you can in 15 minutes, and uh, and then you get some tokens to use in the shop. And I guess the more you do this, the more you can turn it up, like like greater rifts. I'm not sure. Do you know anything, Curbs, on this? Uh, on what specifically? Sorry. On what? How how it scales? Like why they're comparing it to uh. Diablo greater, greater rifts? Like can you? Can you do another level where you have to kill 50 okay. enemies that are harder, or what? So, it's clear stages. A given 15 minutes, clear the stages. It involves killing 50 or so enemies or making it through, or whatever, at least. Um, it basically just seems like it's a just make it as far as you can go. So be it level 15, level 40, level 87, it I don't think you could actually get there in 15 minutes. But, yeah. Uh, it's, I think the main part of this is just the fact that they're trying to, I guess, revitalize the Infinite Forest, which was... There was actually no purpose in that being a thing. Because all you have to do for it is run to the end of that part of the forest hop to the portal to the next part you wouldn't have to kill or do anything and there's nothing that requires you to go into it besides your random dailies right um so so what's the odds of them making this like a permanent event rather than a, a seasonal thing if people really like it like do they ever do forest that forest no they're not no they won't do that so they're a also seasonal event is just a seasonal event for them. Yeah, they're also comparing it to sparrow racing. Is that still a thing, or is it not a thing? <laughs> oh man, if this was like sparrow racing, that'd be amazing. But no, that's that's not a that's a D one thing only currently. Okay, they so they they've never brought they've never brought that to D two. No, they okay. haven't brought that to D two yet. I'd imagine they probably will, but I. 
and on the whole, it being like Diablo, I no. no. Hmm. That's Would not. Would you say it's more like an endless dungeon from uh, Exile then? Closer, <laughs> but I'm not. Sure. Did the endless dungeon have a time limit? Because it sounds like an endless dungeon just with a 15 minute time limit. Well, yeah, you're not really. It didn't have a time limit, but it just you know. You have to con continuously move and move and go and go. <laughs> there yeah. was a light radius, but and then you know you got to beat each section uh, section boss and move to the next section boss. You know? Yeah. The reason they quoted it to the greater rifts or the rifts in Diablo is because you're getting a section of the map where you have to clear things, and then moving on to another section. It's really, it's. It's a time trial, sure, but it's not. I think that's a pretty far stretch. Yeah, they're saying they're saying it's like the the basic building block, just having randomly generated enemies in an area. Mm -hmm. But after that, if they could take it up a notch and actually make the enemies scale, then they could have, you know, rifts with diff different difficulties or greater rifts that have different numbers. They couldn't do that though because they've already gotten a ton of flack about all the enemies being bullet sponges. Yeah. And that would just escalate more problems for them. So that I don't see that happening either, unfortunately. Cool, cool. What's wrong with them being bullet sponges? Everyone hates a bullet sponge. Oh, I don't do enough damage. Well, then get My immersion. Good. This is a bullet. Why don't <laughs> they die to it? Eh. Well, no, it's, it's just good. it's just like on on Diablo, the Greater Rifts. Once it gets too high. You know, the health on a Rift Guardian, you know, you know if you don't have three minutes for the Rift Guardian, then you don't have enough time to kill right. him. So, but it also depends on the gear you're running. I mean... No, no, no. Like, eventually, even with all the gear min-maxed, you still can't, like, get better, you know? I mean, yeah. it's end game, but yeah. Yeah. Right, it's end game. You're not supposed to get there, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, I... People just complain way too much. Like, the well, game yeah, is... people always complain. Destiny 2, by all standards, I don't know how it is after the new up, or DLC, because I haven't played it yet, but to all standards, I would consider it a failure. I've enjoyed what I've played of it, but it is, in fact, a failure. Well, well I mean, I have a year, maybe. friends that play it, but they say it's pretty decent, but they also like the franchise more. Yeah. I mean, I like... It's also not my franchise that I would like to play. <laughs> I mean, my buddies and I put a couple hundred hours in running raids and helping people through it. I think it took us 12, no, for the newest um, raid lair, uh, Spire of Stars, it took us, I think, nine hours to go going in without a map to figure everything out. I mean, it was enjoyable. You know what I would like to but... play again? So. I would like them to do another... Uh, I want. I'm really looking forward to the remake of Resident Evil 2. Resident Evil 2. <laughs> yeah. Did you not see that? No, I. Uh, I have nightmares for Resident Evil 2, man. Well, they're remaking it with better <laughs> graphics. Well, that's not going to help me at all with my nightmares. <laughs> better scares. <laughs> no thanks, man. Oh come on, man! It was, it was a great game. It was a great game right. that made me sleep with the lights on for about a year. Well, this one will probably do the same. <laughs> so I probably won't play it, but I, you, I appreciate... You know what really messed with me? When uh, when I played uh, Dead Space in oh, the yeah. farmhouse. Oh, yeah. Dead Space is scary, like, too. No lights anywhere, anywhere in the farmhouse. Like... Yeah, man, I gotta ask, so what made you go to RE2 from <laughs> Destiny? We're just, we're just going there, man. Because Destiny's kind of... Eh. I... Uh, fair enough. It's just something you like better. Gotcha. I was just curious. Well, no, because so it's the same developer. But, I know, yeah. I know, but it's because like, if 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 Capcom can redo Resident Evil Two, you know, make it better. Yeah, yeah. Then they can do the same with Destiny. And that's my point. Ah. Uh, Will I play? Sure. It? Will that I play it? Is Probably not. Wide yeah, but I think there's I think there's a large part of the 
Destiny community that believes that Destiny 1 uh, Taken King was the height of Destiny. And then Destiny well, 2 brought it down hard, and it's not gone back up. See, think... what killed me on Destiny was the way they handled the first Destiny. Okay. I mean, all, all the DLCs were already in the game, and you just paid to unlock it. That's it. Like, it was already there on the disc before they even released the DLCs. Like, it was already there. All of it. <laughs> unfortunately, a very popular trend, and it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. I would agree with that. But, but right, but that's what I'm saying. Instead of releasing a full, an actual game, let's just release the first, like, Two hour tutorial and then sell you the rest of the game again. Yeah, we, we talked yeah. about this last week with the trends and season passes and DLC announced before a game even launches and stuff like that. Like, there's bad things happening in the industry. Well, no, it's not that. It's like, <laughs> I just want to see where they go back to, you know, making actual games and then making actual DLCs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I probably would have played Dennis, Destiny that way. Yeah. But because it was already there, and I looked at my buddy's disc, and we already saw that it was all there, it's like, why do I want to pay for it <laughs> again? <laughs> gotcha. On the Taken King being the height of Destiny 2, I wouldn't necessarily... Destiny, Destiny 1. Destiny yeah. 1, sorry. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily say the height. I mean, it was, but it was more of just the thing that made the game not the worst. No, game I've heard. Play. I've heard it. It is. It is the thing that made Destiny perfect. It's, and then, you know, time went on. I get the thing that took from, it on it, from but... like the. It's the thing that took us from like the ashes to. Yeah. The ashes. <laughs> like from the ashes up to you know. Uh, yeah, it's. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to Fortnite news. Oh, uh, that you did what now? Because Elon, oh, yes. Elon Musk bought Fortnite and he said he's going to delete it. And he said, "Did he actually buy it?" Dude? And he said, "Had it been had it been done, you're welcome." And now it has five hundred twenty six thousand likes on Twitter. No, he actually didn't. But it would be Damn. cool. It would be cool if he did. That that is really sad that he actually didn't buy it. <laughs> and... uh, because Elon. Oh. Oh, I like I'm gonna, that. I'm going to tweet him now and complain that he didn't actually buy it, and that makes me sad. Yeah, re read the quote, Curbs. That's an amazing quote. Hold on, hold on. Get your Elon, get your Elon voice, get your Elon voice on. <laughs> I had to save these kids from eternal virginity. That's about Elon. There you go. That's, That's not bad. <laughs> And, and we, we didn't need we didn't need a a submarine or anything to help them this time. Just extra wow. money. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're blending the news. I like it, man. I like it. All right, let's move on. All right, I so mean, maybe uh, if you had sent him a flamethrower, but oh there yeah, we go. now we're now we're going all all uh, into everything on um, Elon news. That's nice. We should have an Elon cast one time and invite did him you, over. Did you, did you know see that was just what they like did a... with the flamethrowers? Yeah, yes, we did. What, no, what people did with the flamethrowers? Oh yeah, but I mean, really, you know, people are going to do things with flamethrowers that they are going to do because it's a flamethrower. <laughs> I mean, actually, it's just a. Uh, it's a grill starter. A cook. Yeah, it's a grill starter, cooking torch, whatever you want to call it. It's just that. With it's no. I mean, it, it says, literally says, not a flamethrower. Because it's not a flamethrower. That's correct. But it's a flamethrower. It's absolutely a flamethrower. It does not throw flame. It just releases flame. You guys heard he's coming out with Tesla Kila, right? What's <laughs> that? He's, he's going to start making tequila. And it's going to be called Tes oh, Tesla Kila. Yeah. Brewed saw... in the engine of a Tesla. <laughs> 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 All right, it's so so moving off of Elon news, although that was fun. Um, so there's a uh, there's an article from Kotaku talking about uh, independent game shops and that they're not going to get uh, Red Dead Redemption Two um, on the release date, which is October 26th. So they'll be getting it sometime in November. 
And it sounds like it's because of, you know, mega corporations like Walmart, Amazon, GameStop, stuff like that, that they're able to, uh, Best Buy, let's throw them under the bus too while we're here, um, that they're able to drive the sales better. So to just deal with the supply chain a little bit easier, they're going to cut out all these little guys who have their little game shops. Um, even though this one guy specifically spent about $3,300 of his own store profits, you know, just adorning his whole store with, uh, cowboys and red dead props and all this stuff. And he's not even going to be able to sell the game when it releases. So he's going to lose out in something like $30,000 in sales. So, uh, so that's pretty awesome. I didn't know that was a thing, but that's a thing. Okay, sixty thousand dollars in lost sales. My bad. He would have uh, between his four stores. He predicts customers would have purchased more than a thousand copies. So that's kind of a bummer. Yeah, I think overall it sucks that he's having to lose out on potential profits. Uh, but he's also kind of jumping the gun a little bit. You, the when you decide to open pre-orders two years in advance to when the game comes out. Yeah, yeah, that's a thing. You have no confirmation or guarantee of it being distributed properly like this or it tanking so you don't, you know, so you lose out on your $3,300 of preparation that you, he apparently did. It's, mm -hmm. it's That's just bad business. But also... I don't know what the whole Gamefly not getting it is about because that's a bigger company, but yeah. Probably to push sales rather than push rentals. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a bad situation for him mixed with bad business, but yeah. And there was a time back in the day that Blockbuster would get um, movie rentals 28 days before Redbox. Again, it's just a bigger company going after a smaller disruptor, you know, right. in the industry, kind of locking them out. And Blockbuster probably paid a ton to get that deal. And then, you know, you see what happens to Blockbuster because people are just done with it. So anyway, um, you got anything on the Simon? Not really. All right, cool. Because, I mean, businesses are going to be ridiculous. Like, not like the small shops, like... It, the game companies are going to be like, you know, hey, we want big names to to, to do our pre-sales and all that stuff because whatever reason. Cause probably because they get more money from it that way. Yeah. Because it's like when um, when you try to acquire something, let's say, uh, let's say like the sports. Like, see, let's, say, let's just take sports in general. When you try to acquire the rights to, to, to like... Uh, air sports of a certain type you gotta you have to bid on mm -hmm. a certain amount of money in order to get that and we'll be talking about that shortly yeah that's right, nice, right. nice but but for like these, these game companies stores are bidding to have their product in their store correct so if the small companies can't put up the bids because walmart's like i'll give you 2.8 million dollars if you give me like like 70 pre-order boxes you know <laughs> Well, yeah, that and like the uh, they're not making any money off of the sale of the game. The sale of the game on launch day is a controlled price, right? The only money they're making is the amount of units they moved. And they know that Amazon, Best Buy, GameStop are going to move the most units. So they already have a deal where it's part, like yeah. $5 a disc or, or $10 or $11 or whatever, which is, again, why you can get Amazon pre-order games $13 cheaper or $12 cheaper. I guess 47.99 is like the price nowadays because they know nice. that they're going to move a million products and they made a deal with EA that they're only going to give them, you know, $45 to move them all on launch day. And EA is like, "Okay, cool." So they made, you know, 20 million in sales times $2. So they made 40 million off of that and they didn't even have to like buy low or sell high. They just sold, you know. Right. So yeah, and that's what I'm saying. It's like it's just, who, how are you gonna make our money? Because they don't make money off of selling game people buying no. games and no, they it's don't. Stores buying games. <laughs> yep. 
So I mean, he'll probably have it used before he gets the new version. <laughs> Meat, or, you know? uh, go to, or you could just go to Amazon and buy them, and then put them up for the normal fix. Three price. days later, yeah, exactly. It's assuming he takes trade-ins anyway, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it sucks though because like there's a lot of mom and pop stores that I would rather go to pick to up support, a game. right? Yeah. Well, not not just to support because you get a better vibe when you go there. You get you get treated better because you go to GameStop. They don't care what you want. <laughs> oh, GameStop employees are so bad. Yeah, it depends. It depends on the GameStop. Like even where I'm at, you know, we have like 22 GameStops or whatever in our town. So it's right. like, you know, one of them is pretty good, and 21 I mean, of them are kind of not. You know, <laughs> when I lived in Hawaii, there's what there's 15 in in Hawaii when I lived there. And... Yeah. I only used to go to one yeah, GameStop. Yeah, there's one because it has decent people, you know. Well, yeah. no, I used to go to this GameStop because all all the employees that worked there were my buddies. Oh, there you <laughs> go. Every single shift, every single employee in that store were all my friends. <laughs> That's the only reason I would go there. <laughs> all right, cool. Let's uh, let's move on to um, what you got next? on to technology. So we have a uh, we have a new robot. This is um, this is the vector, the Anki vector. Um, is this a video? Yeah, it's a video on YouTube. Um, basically, so Anki used to make um, ma they kind of still make them the the slot car racing tracks. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, this is courtesy of. Um, I want to say The Verge. I don't know. I'm pretty sure this is The Verge. One sec. Yeah, this is The Verge. So they had uh, these slot cars. They perfected that pretty well. And then they went into this thing making uh, this robot called Cosmo. And Cosmo is pretty cool. He had an app. He has a little cube that he interacts with. You can play games with him. You can, like, uh, you can, like, do, like, quick draw where you have to, like, touch the cube before Cosmo touches the cube. And uh, anyway, so it's like any game points or whatever. But now this one is uh, is Alexa enabled. So now it's like a total total spy spy robot. <laughs> if you're on the Alexa court, believing that Alexa's spying on you. But um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, it looks really cool. I like I like the black, you know, because uh, the other one was like white and blue or whatever. I like the black look. Um, but yeah, a lot of things are getting the Alexa treatment nowadays. I mean, there's an Alexa microwave now, so... Um, what? Yeah, yeah, that's a, it's a whole separate thing. We might have an Alexa show. Um, all right, we got to do an Alexa show because I want to see this. <laughs> Just go through all of the Alexa <laughs> Alexa announcements. We'll probably it's do it... It's a quality product, guys. We'll, pro on. we'll probably do it in December because uh, AWS's reInvent, uh, Amazon Web Services reInvent, is on... Uh, is in the is at the end of November and they're gonna probably announce a lot more with voice with Alexa and all that. Alexa um, seven point seven? <laughs> no, it's not Alexa doesn't really have version numbers like that, but yeah, um if basically they're always trying to iterate and make more ways to make devices smart, find new ways to communicate via voice. Um if anyone has a decent voice idea, um you can make an Alexa skill. And there are people who have made, you know, tens, twenty, thirty thousand dollars off their Alexa skills without, you know, doing anything, without paying a dime, you know, just because Alexa or because Amazon's like, oh my God, that's genius. We'll definitely pay you some money. And they haven't really disclosed how they determine if something's a good idea or a bad idea or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, but Alexa's, you know, voice, uh, I think this, the stat, uh, recently that I heard was one out of four Google searches is done by voice. So voice is coming. Um, but to have a, a robot actually respond to your voice and, and play games with you or, or look at you funny if you do something because you said some keyword, that, that's kind of cool. Of course, it's always listening. That's the side effect. Anyway, what do you guys think? Um, I don't know. Like, what's... I mean, it looks pretty awesome. But, like, what's the practical or fun use of it? It's just got it's just got dancing. mini games and stuff. It just it's just really animated. Um, it was animated by Disney Pixar ex employees. They they kind of took it up a notch. It's got really cute. Like, I don't know if we can hear the sounds that it makes, but um, I wonder if they have it. 
I mean, it can connect Home robot. to the internet when and you answer about... your questions, you know, just like you would on do on like voice or a phone or computer right. or whatever. But right, just like an Alexa spot or yeah. whatever. Yeah, it's just it's not practical though. You wouldn't like you would. You have, can't say go get to... me a drink. You know. <laughs> yeah, you'd sit it on a table and then it's just be like, well, that's a cool thing, I guess. And then if you want it to be with you to, you know, tell you something else in another area, if you go sit down, it's like, oh, I got to bring him with me. All right. It, so not just it's a phone just won't fit in your pocket properly. So what if I got rid of the Reinhardt pop guy that I have in front of me today on my desk and instead I had a, uh, a vector robot. See, and then you guys, you guys could interact with it and stuff. Yeah, that changes a bit because then it goes <laughs> from just a paperweight to a gimmick. Yeah, and it has gimmicks rock. Mm -hmm. Gimmicks are the best. But uh... <laughs> all right, so maybe I'll get one, and you guys can mess around with them because uh, Alexa has the ability to do if this then that, and so does mm -hmm. um, a lot of the stuff on my computer. So um, we can make vector do push-ups when i do push-ups and stuff can, like that you know can we have a command that we can just be like nectar attack and it'll charge at you and it'll start like climbing on my keyboard and hitting buttons and yeah. stuff yeah yeah, yeah. Totally. Um, we can we can we can make him come over to like where the escape key is and just lift up his hands <laughs> and go wow and just interrupt uh interrupt gameplay just like that thanks thanks vector appreciate you you gotta just, teach it how to just hit like, f4 yeah, just yeah. be like vector F11, F11, F11. <laughs> nice. All right, so more on the uh, on the tech side. Um, there's also a uh, a new announcement from uh, Asus and their ROG phone. So the Republic of Gamers phone is pretty, uh, it's, I guess, supposedly the most powerful phone created so far. Um, they're looking at doing a uh, a second screen feature. Basically, you can dock the phone into a handheld and like we were saying before the podcast it turns it into basically a ds but right. um you know android has the ability to do second screen it's had it for a long time so to be able to throw on the second screen whether it be a game guide or you can watch youtube while you're uh while you're playing a game or you could have no games going and be doing other things entirely. You could have just an interactive display on the bottom that you can touch and then a, a display that just displays on the top. Um, looks really, looks really cool. Um, they're even using the, uh, the idea of streaming at Twitch, streaming on Twitch at the same time while you're playing a game. Cause you'd be able to see chat and interact with them. Um, pretty cool. What do you guys think? I think it should be, I think <laughs> well, I mean, stream I... Streamlabs on a phone can stream to anything you set it up to. So, and Mixer Create app is a thing, so you could use the Mixer Create app on the bottom screen, and then you could see chat on the top. So, yeah, that would work too. Oh my! My, my only cons my only thing is because like with 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 uh, Twitch, there's always that awful delay. You know. You know it. You know it. I think they're getting better at that, but still, no, I think FTL FTL is better. So, what do you think of curves? I think it's gonna end up like. Uh, you guys remember the PSP Go? Yeah. 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 Remember that? Yeah. Remember how bad that was? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's gonna plummet worse than the Vita sales. Oh. And, like go down to PSP Go territory. Well, it's definitely gonna sell less than the Vita. I mean. If you the look Vita's at Vita's sales were horrible for the longest time. No, no, like like if you think about it like this, like a Vita was still around for five years. You know, a phone is not gonna be around for five years. A no, phone is yeah, a phone is around for two years. Here. Sure, yeah, but at the same years, time two best. years max to, to buy a phone is two years. So yeah. and that's right now. So this is gonna sell, you know, a handful of units in comparison to any major mobile yeah. console, but just Vita was also in a stagnant state though for the entirety of its five years. Yeah, because it wasn't a PSP. Mm. Uh, 
<laughs> Honestly, it was a better console than the PSP. It just oh, it just but was it? Wrong. But was it better enough? Because I still played my PSP. I think the PS Vita was better enough. I think the people, you know, just trying to push it did a horrible job yeah. doing it. But yeah, that's why I brought up the PSP Go though. That's small little almost slide phone esque looking PSP. I mean I think it's gonna <sighs> I wanna see the price for this thing. <laughs> well the rock buy... the rock phone comes in at around uh, nine hundred and fifty I think is what I saw. You said what nine hundred and fifty? Yeah. Which I mean that's kind of standard for phones. I mean it's a little less than the newer like iPhones and whatnot. But I wanna know I mean I want to know how much the actual okay. thing you're connecting it to is. Yeah, my bad. Okay, so 12 hours ago, um, it was announced pre-order for eight ninety nine for the ROG phone. Oh, I can... Okay. That sounds, that doesn't sound too bad. Yeah, that's not bad. Oh, by the way, speaking of random oh my streaming gosh. games, <laughs> I, did get a, I did get an invite for that Assassin's Creed stream thing. I got it too, dude. It's awesome, yeah. isn't it? Have you tried it? I was in Hawaii. Oh yeah, dude, you got you got to turn it on. It's good until like January, thirty yeah. first. It's on for a while. Yeah. So what Iman's talking about is something we covered uh, last stream or last podcast or the podcast before. We were talking about Project Stream. Three, two podcasts. Yeah, several podcasts ago. Yeah, I got in on the uh, on the invite to basically streaming uh, streaming stuff through the Chrome browser. And yeah, straight up, man, I was playing you know ten eighty p at sixty frames per second. So. Uh, I'm sold. It was pretty awesome. I might yeah. I might stream it sometime this next week just to to do it. Uh, I really want I really wanted to stream uh, Smite tonight though. So yeah, yeah. Maybe after the podcast, I'll do. It's kind of interesting. Of Odyssey. The, uh... Nah, let's do some more Smite. We'll do some more Smite. Okay, cool. I finally I got it installed now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to last two articles. Um, Actually, we're not going to talk about the Mate 20 because it's very similar to the ROG phone, and it's more interesting. The so la- last, the Mate 20, the Huawei Mate 20. Oh yeah, yeah. the, wa- the oh, one, see, the already, one that looks like the Switch. But right, already, that name bad. Get rid of it. Well, the Mate's been a, a name for a while, you know, like the Huawei. No, Huawei. Huawei is the name of the company, man. I guess it's <laughs> yeah. To, to no, most Americans, bad. it looks like Huawei, but it's Huawei. No, it's Huawei. Yeah, it's, it's bad. <laughs> It, it is bad. It, the name screams, shoot me in the face, don't ever touch me again. Wow. Curbs I'm is sorry. So, Curbs I is have, so quiet, have, it's funny. We have four of these, <laughs> these Huawei phones at work for our streaming platform, and you know what? I absolutely hate it. Yeah, we had, uh, we had the, me and my wife both had the, the Nexus 6P, was, which was made by Huawei. Yeah. But, uh, what, yeah. That's why I went with the Google Pixel 2 XL. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice solid upgrade. She went from 6P to 2 XL. I went from 6P yeah. to Pixel XL. 1. Yeah, yeah XL. Pixel XL. I, don't, I still don't know if I'm going to get the Pixel 3. I don't know. I don't know. I don't it's know. not much looking good on them. I don't I mean, know. Let's just not talk about them. I might just, I might just get a ROG phone. <laughs> We're about the same price. Yeah. I mean, 120. Does it come with the dock, though? No, but you can get all that stuff. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, so final article. We're talking about the future of football. Um, earlier, Iman was talking about how much people bid to show uh, football games. So as part of a two-year deal with the NFL worth a reported $130 million, Amazon is streaming 11 Thursday night football games this season. Um, and that follows their initial one-year deal with the NFL last season. So, yeah. um, so it's on Twitch. Um, what you can do while you're watching Thursday Night Football is you can interact with the uh, with the broadcast, um, and you can you can kind of place your bid over under if someone's going to get a first down, if someone's going to break this many rushing yards, whatever. Um, kind of gives you more of an interactive way of playing the game. Definitely does it more like uh, a live fantasy without having to worry about an entire fantasy football team. You could just watch a fantasy well, game. My concern is it's on Twitch. <laughs> well, yeah. 
So, so what's wrong with uh, being on Twitch? So, no matter what you're doing, it's going to be 30 seconds or longer behind the actual play. So, I mean... Well, you can actually take the delay down way lower than 30 on Twitch. I don't think you can have a zero second delay, but I think you can have a get it down to about three seconds. No, but even, even on networks, they, they already have a delay of like 30 seconds to a minute as well. Yeah, so it's always going to be... So just Beyond. don't look at Twitter while you're while you're watching the game because oh it's not even that totally I mean spoiled. if you're actively like trying to bid crap on it you're better off just going to the game <laughs> because gotcha. it's you're always gonna be behind yeah but because everyone everyone is equally behind that's that's the well no because I know a lot of people that do fantasy football and whatnot and they actually go to the games and you know they're ahead of people. Because they go to the actual game. Yeah, but all I'm saying is that while everyone's watching it on Twitch, they're going to... Oh, man, that's a good point, though. Because if you were watching it on the TV... You're still behind. You would, Well, you you might be less behind than Twitch, and then you'd see that they were going to get the fourth downs, then you'd vote for it, and then you'd be right. Huh. That's a good point. I didn't really <laughs> think about it like that. So, I mean, it's... Uh... It's blah. <laughs> no, I just like the idea of interactive sports. I don't really I do care. Too, I don't really care about the fact that it's it NFL. On, I don't think it should be on Twitch. I think it should be on something that uses like FTL or. I know. would like to see it, rather than actual football, be like one of the, just one of the games of it, and it be an interactive, Twitch plays. You know, NFL. Oh, like Twitch plays. Uh, like when they, it? like when they did the Pokemon thing, and it's like. So you're talking like. In the chat, and it's like. So you're talking like Madden, and then have yeah. yeah. So so one of the guys on Mixer, his name is uh, the One X Factor. That's a mm-hmm. D A One X Factor. Um, he does. He has like the number one Madden community on Mixer, and he does a lot of stuff like that, where he makes an interactive board for uh, for his guys to to vote on you know what plays to run or what teams to play or whatever so right but the thing about the twitch plays one though is there's not really an interactive board correct it's, correct it's it's just a, a pop-up bunch of people spam yeah yeah it's just a bunch of pop-ups yeah also basically it's like do you guys see the uh the twitch plays uh oh what is that game uh Darn it! I can't think of. <laughs> oh man, don't worry, my brain's still soggy. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, why is nobody playing it? I'll get back to you with the answer to that. Sorry. All right, and that's that's where we wrap it up tonight, guys. <laughs> anyway, um, all right. So I'll do I'll do the streamer shout out, and then we'll see if Iman can find what he was talking about. All right, okay. so. Uh, one second. All right. So, uh, streamer shout out this week is for uh, eMonster808, who happens to also be on the round table with us. Um, so, eMon's been streaming longer than I have uh, on a couple of different platforms. So, um, so definitely drop him a follow if you see him on Mixer. That's We're talking primary on Mixer, right, Iman? Yeah, I'm liking Mixer a lot better than um, Twitch and, and anything else right now because the simple fact that that FTL where I can actually respond to my viewers. Yeah. Less, less than a second later. Yeah. Less than, you see chat say something and then you say something back and then they say something back and it's like, you're actually having a conversation in 2018. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Um, yeah. So he's, he can be found at mixer.com slash E that's the letter E monster spelled like monster eight zero eight. Um, so earlier you were saying you streamed Black Desert and you streamed a little bit le- uh, earlier for Ark. Yeah, a little bit of yeah. Ark before coming to the podcast. And then maybe since we're playing Smite now, we might be uh, might be playing some competitive Smite on the Smite channel. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I'll have to uh, shake the rust off. Being yeah, a- br- bring your A game, dude. All right. Uh, so uh, so with that, did you find uh, what you're looking for, dude? No, I didn't. We're just gonna so leave all the view- can, all the viewers and listeners. Ex- I can kind of <laughs> tell you which game it is, but I don't remember the name. Um, it's got three. It's got three uh, parts in the series. 
Um, three what? It's got three parts in the in the game series and. So trilogy, okay. Yeah, it's a, tr it's a trilogy. The first one was ridiculously hard, and everybody complained and cried about how hard it was. The Are we first talking about specifically? Are we talking yeah. about Dark Souls? Yeah, there you go. There oh, you go. All right, there you Thank go. Thank you. A lot of people have cried about Dark Souls, but there was a Twitch plays Dark Souls episode, and the act like if everybody like said a like a button or whatever, it, it would do the a button. <laughs> like it would that's actually fine. do that. That's yeah. fine. Because yeah, it, surely, it was surely, it, yeah, surely people die until <laughs> until <laughs> not uh, like, uh, until chat kind of calmed down and uh, started not complaining and working together instead. <laughs> yeah, it's not like the game's easy, you know. Like, what a terrible! Ah, oh, that'd be that'd be I awful. I found it. I found it quite fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe it'd be fun to watch watch you fail and die, but to actually like be successful, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like Iman, he would be the one person. Everyone's like synced up, and finally, after like seven hours of going at it, they're all like left, no right, we're going right. Sorry, guys. <laughs> awesome. Like heavy attack. No, we're rolling. Rolling. Dodge. No, no you just roll the whole dodge, time. Buddy. It's, it's dark dodge, souls. Buddy. Just roll, 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 dodge, roll. Right. Yeah. Because rolling is faster than That's, walking. Yeah, yeah, you know it. They beat. They finally managed to beat the game. They decided to do. A uh, no death, no armor, no roll, no dodge, you know, run through it again. And it's like, oh, no, bye, guys. Yeah, I'm screwing you over here. Roll. Yep. <laughs> so just right out of the gate, like they restart it like 10 times. It's like, all right, let's go roll. All right, guys, let's roll. <laughs> oh, rolling. finally, we made it to the first boss. Roll. Roll. Just keep rolling. <laughs> Just oh, the last boss, guys. We can do roll. All right, so that's where, that's where we're gonna we're gonna end the podcast tonight. Um, yep. For uh, for my co-host, thanks again to uh, to Curbs and Iman for hanging out. Yeah, um, no problem. Iman it's always is, a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Iman is again able to be found at mixer.com slash emonster eight oh eight. Um, Curbs can be found in my chat most nights. Curbs, you want to you want to you want to shout out a. Uh, uh, a social or anything do you are you on the I'm twitter or anything make, i'm gonna make music now all right i'm gonna let you know when to do the music okay okay all right and you can always tune in live for I'm the uh, sidewalk <laughs> you can always tune in live for the podcast at mixer.com <laughs> slash pixels get me um if you guys uh download thanks so much uh any review on anchor you can do applause uh, on YouTube, you can do the subscribes, the likes. I totally appreciate it. Um, on Twitter, you might see it. So if you could do a like, a share, a retweet, um, whatever, uh, that'd be cool too. Um, thanks so much for everyone's support. Um, now we're going to roll out the outro music. Thanks so much, guys. Have a nice night. That was awesome.